Hello, America. Welcome to another edition of the Schaefer Stock Market Podcast, where we will not be talking about Zion Williams's shoe or Nike. You may be glad to hear that. I am Josh Selway, an editor at Schaefer's Investment Research. For this episode of the podcast, I am speaking into a microphone on Thursday, February 21st, 2019. It's been a positive week so far for stocks. The NASDAQ actually just notched an a straight win, its best win streak since August. Ostensibly, it seems that a trade deal between the U.S. and China is at least showing some signs of progress, you could say. But really, what do we know? Uh, Things could go south at any moment. All the same, Caterpillar had a really nice week because of the seemingly positive trade developments, and fellow trade-sensitive stock Boeing has also rallied, touching fresh highs along the way. This is mostly due to the fact that President Trump has signaled that he can be flexible around that March 1st deadline that we've all been watching that he originally set for another round of tariffs to hit. Of course, the release of the Fed's January meeting minutes has also helped after the central bank said that it'll stay patient on raising rates and that it also plans to quit unloading its balance sheet by the end of the year. But let's just jump right in and talk about some of the most notable stock moves of the week. We're going to cover a bunch of different names this week to give you a broad sense of some of the biggest movers and names to watch going forward. I've picked 10 names that stuck out to me this week, and we're going to start with the biggest name of the bunch, Walmart, which Walmart started off the trading week with its strong earnings report, and the biggest takeaway was the company's strong e-commerce sales, up 43% for the period, and of course that period was the all-important holiday season period. I also saw the company's CFO, this stuck out to me, noted that the company hasn't seen a slowdown in growth in China. Walmart has given back some of its earnings gains since then. Uh, It topped out around $104 or or so on Tuesday, and it was last seen just below the $100 mark. During the broad market sell-off in December, Walmart traded as low as $86 per share. That e-commerce growth is really something to note for Walmart. They've made a lot of investments in recent years. A lot of traders uh, have wondered whether they should remain patient. That's been the the real question is whether you want to remain patient behind Walmart as it makes these changes and invests in e-commerce. And it would seem at least during this period that those changes have proven to be fruitful for the company. Uh, A lot of other retailers seemingly struggled during the holiday period, but Walmart posting strong e-commerce growth. Again, 43% sales sales growth uh, in digital sales for the company during the holiday season. So strong numbers there from Walmart, and that really got the ball rolling early in the week. Another popular name that has remained in the headlines, we've covered a lot and for good reason, continues to pop up and make big moves, and that is video game stock Electronic Arts EA. It's been a wild month for the stock, and we've noted over at Schaefer's Investment Research the data illustrating just how unusually volatile it really has been. We looked at the 30-day historical volatility. We could have done the 60-day, 120-day historical volatility. All these numbers show just how unusually volatile electronic arts has been. The shares have benefited from the huge reception around the company's Fortnite competitor, Apex Legends. But now the attention has turned to its upcoming Anthem game release set to come out and hit the market on Friday, February 22nd. Brokerage firm Piper Jaffray said it's seen mostly positive commentary around Anthem's new trailers, but a few different sites have posted some very negative reviews for the game, calling it a, quote, mess, unquote. Regardless, analysts on the whole have remained very bullish on EA, even though it's far from its 52-week high. The stock was last seen trading around $98 per share. And we're going to move on to maybe the most notable winner this week, and that was China-based Candy Technologies, ticker KNDI. The electric vehicle producer had two of its EV models, electric vehicle models, approved for import into the U.S. by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The stock was hovering just below $6 per share before the news hit and was last seen trading up around $9.15 per share, putting the shares in territory not seen since October 2017. A stock that rallied alongside Candy Technologies was Blink Charging 
ticker BLNK. That is the electric vehicle charging station operator and services provider. That stock rallied to its highest level seen since August. It was last seen trading around $3.67 per share. Last May, the shares popped all the way up to $8.65 per share. And both Blink Charging and Candy Technologies saw unusual call activity during these sharp stock moves, and they continue to see unusual call trading today. And actually, call volume on both those names touched 52-week highs during Wednesday's trading. So it would seem that many are speculating on more upside ahead for these stocks. Also, I should point out that Candy is heavily shorted, suggesting that some of these gains could be due to short sellers covering their position. One stock that could challenge Candy Technologies for my highly sought after stock of the week crowned is Garmin, the navigational expert, ticker GRM. End. The company just posted yet another strong quarter and the sales exploded from the low $70 range up to around $82 per share at last check. The company's outdoor business segment saw the best growth for the quarter. The stock rallied to fresh highs and I remember covering Garmin a few months back wondering when analysts were going to come around due to the seemingly upward trajectory of the company's business. It's just, it just continues to uh, show strength in a number of different categories, but that's yet to happen. Wall Street has remained skeptical on the stock. In fact, just 20% of the covering analysts recommend buying Garmin. So I'd say it's certainly a candidate for bull notes going forward. In the same article over on shafersresearch.com that we covered Garmin, we also highlighted 59 ticker FIVN. That company provides software-centered services for contact centers. And it initially rallied, rallied to a new all-time high after the company released earnings this week, but it saw a sharp reversal, intraday reversal, and actually closed lower on the day. And I, it should be pointed out that 5.9 stock, it's been quite the outperformer though over the long term, is actually almost doubled in value on a year-over-year -year basis. And that's a fairly young uh, company, at least uh, it's only been on Wall Street for a few years now, so we'll see if it can keep up that technical strength. Oh, Weight Watchers, what a ride it has been. Weight Watchers stock, ticker WTW, just hit a fresh low this week, and you just have to look at this stock's decline. If you uh, get a chance, pull up Weight Watchers stock chart because it's just been in a relentless decline on the charts. Back in June, it was at an all-time high, around $105 per share, and it's fallen all the way down to around $30 per share. The other day, there were headlines on financial news sites that were tallying up the decline and what it's done to Oprah's stake in the company. I think I saw one headline that was saying that she's uh, lost about $500 million. I'm not sure what the starting point was for that cal calculation. Maybe it's just she's lost $500 million since from the stock's peak or from her initial investment. I'm not sure. Uh, some painful uh, returns there for Oprah. Shout out to Oprah. Uh, JP Morgan actually downgraded Weight Watcher stock this week to underweight and set a $25 price target. So they're expecting even more struggles going forward. They cited a sharp drop in daily active users and an apparent increase in negative reviews for its application. On top of growing competition from Noom and Diet Doctor. All right, we're gonna move on to utility stock PG&E, ticker PCG. This was a company that filed for bankruptcy protection because of the potential liabilities around its involvement in the California wildfires last year. The shares have been all over the place. They were trading back, uh, they were trading around $48 back in November before the selling really hit, and they eventually fell all the way down to $6 per share in January. Uh, at last check, uh, they continue to climb higher from that low. They were last seen around $18.70 per share, which would be their highest close in weeks. And Citigroup actually just came in with a pretty bold prediction. They upgraded the stock to buy and predicted that there will be a legislative announcement soon that will be uh, a benefit for the company. Citigroup seeing upside there in PCG stock. And this the volatile stock has actually seen quite an uptick in options trading as uh, speculators look to profit from the outside moves in the stock. And we actually just noted, however, that uh, the June 21 call, keep in mind the stock's trading just below $19 per share. The June 21 call 
seemingly saw sell to open activity this week, suggesting traders see this price point as a potential ceiling for the stock. And you'll want to keep an eye out on PCG stock going forward because the company is actually set to report earnings in a week on Thursday, February 28th. Going to turn now to flash drive storage specialist Pure Storage, ticker PSTG. It just received an interesting downgrade from Raymond James to Market Perform. And the highlight of this note was that the brokerage firm sees weakness and data center sales from business partner NVIDIA, the semiconductor stock. It sees that weakness projecting struggles for pure storage. Raymond James also noted rising competition from Dell as a potential headwind for pure storage. The stock was last seen trading around $19 per share, putting it right below the 100-day moving average and a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement of its sharp September decline to December low. And finally, mining stock Southern Copper, ticker SCCO, was named a top pick at City, which upgraded its opinion all the way to buy from sell. The note sparked heavy call trading on the commodities concern, which was last seen trading around $35.60 per share. Southern Copper has been an underperformer over the past year, sliding almost 29%. Wanting to give a shout out to this week's Indicator of the Week from Schaefer Senior Quantitative Analyst Rocky White, which examines the rise in analyst buy ratings on S&P 500 index stocks. We're always trying to get the best look we can at the sentiment in the stock market, and Rocky, as always, provided some interesting data on how analysts have been approaching equities in recent years. The Indicator of the Week hits SchaeferSresearch.com every Wednesday morning, so be sure to check it out. And while you're over there on the website, check out our other free news newsletters, including our market recap, which you can sign up for to receive a rundown of each day's trading activity. Otherwise, you can follow Schaefer's on Twitter, on StockTwits, on Facebook, and on Instagram. And go ahead and please subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening. And if you're kind enough, go ahead and leave a review or tell me what I can do better, what you want to hear. All feedback is welcome. But until next week, this was Josh Selway with Schaefer's Investment Research. Thank you so much for listening.